everybody, in papers 1, 2 and 3 you're going to have a very similar style of question, a 9 marker and a 15 mark question for you to look at. These are all explain or analyse questions. Right, let's dig down a bit further. In, paper, in papers 1 and 2, in section A, you're going to have a 9 mark question to do uh, in your data response part, that is based around extracts. And then in section B, you're going to have a 15 marker to do, in the essay section that is. Uh, in paper 3, in section B, there is a 15 marker to do. The 15 markers are always the same style of question. The 9 marker is very slightly different, but essentially the same kind of question as well. These are all explain or analyse questions, which means it's the depth of economic theory that is going to be tested. How well can you explain economic theory? The level of depth is what's going to determine your final mark at the end. In that sense, chains of analysis is really important. Can you go through economic theory starting here, ending here, and linking all the chains of analysis together to get to the end? That's how well you know your theory, right? That's what's going to score you the top marks if you can do that really, really, really well. There is no on the other hand needed, so no two-sided argument, no evaluation, no critique of the theory that you're mentioning, and no judgment, no answer to the question at the end needed either. So none of this needed. It's just analysis. It's just how well you can explain economic theory that is going to be marked here. Nothing else is required on this question. Let's look at the technique then. For the 9 marker or the 15 marker, regardless where it comes, if the 15 marker is paper 3, if it's paper 1 and paper 2, if it's a 9 marker, it doesn't matter. The technique is always the same for these questions. You start with defining all the key terms in the question, then the order doesn't matter. You've just got to make sure that these three things are done. You need to make sure that there are diagrams. All these questions will be designed whereby a diagram will be quite natural. It will be very rare for you to answer a 15 marker or a 9 marker without drawing a diagram. Chances are there will definitely be at least one diagram for you to draw. Make sure the diagram that you draw is relevant and is helpful in you answering the question. But also make sure that the diagram is drawn accurately and is explained in full detail. So explaining the shift. If you're shifting a curve on there, explain why you're shifting a curve. Refer to the shift. If there is any action on the axis, on the y-axis or the x-axis, refer to those changes and explain why those changes are occurring. So full detail is required on the diagram. The diagram itself has got to be accurate, but you need to explain the diagram. You've got to talk about the diagram for you to get top marks for using it. Examples is so important, guys. If you want the best mark, you've got to make sure that you're applying. Now on the 9 marker in paper 1 and paper 2, you've got extracts to help you. That will make life super easy for application. The 15 marker in paper 2, you don't have application. You're going to have to do that on your own, from your own wider reading or from your own general knowledge you'll need to apply. Uh, in paper 3, the 15 marker, you've got loads of extract data there, source material to help you. But application is super important. How do you apply? How do you use your examples? You don't lump them in at the end of a paragraph. You don't lump them at the end of an essay. You don't write them in isolation. You use examples throughout your essay, integrated within your essay, to back up the diagrams maybe that you're talking about, to back up the theory, definitely, that you're talking about. That's so important. So application is important for your depth of analysis to back up that, but also on your diagram. Why not apply on your diagram? Instead of just price, maybe it's price of coffee. You know? Instead of price level, maybe it's price level UK. Real GDP UK, apply on your diagram. That will make you look really professional and really you know, high level as an economist. But use of examples integrated throughout your essay has got to be done really well. And the examples should be really good, not just one or two words, but actual proper examples that can back up your theory and that you can apply on your diagram with. But then crucially, of course, your depth of analysis. How well do you know your economic theory? How in, in how much depth can you explain your core economic theory? Maybe that's a policy. Maybe that's just a point that you're trying to make. You've got to explain it in serious, serious detail. Make sure you watch my video of how to write a perfect economic paragraph to see great tips when it comes to analysis. And you'll get that. Uh, you'll get that nailed. But chains is the key. And chains will be written in the Marx schemes. Can you link your theory together? That's the depth that's required. So practice that. That's what's going to score you the top marks for this question. These questions are marked using levels, whether it's in paper 1 or paper 2 or in paper 3. It's all marked using levels. Don't worry about what's in the, the levels, the nitty gritty. Just know that if you do these four things to the highest possible quality, you'll hit the top marks. You'll be in the top level for all of these questions, regardless of the paper. 
what is the difference then between nine markers and 15 markers? Well, the nine marker in paper one and paper two will be very narrow focus. It will be very specific um, as to what you need to be talking about, what you need to be analyzing. So very narrow focus there. But you will have extracts to help you with the application. So take the application from the extracts that are there. You've also got less time for the nine marker, 12 minutes to do this. The 15 marker in papers one and, uh, and two will be more broad, so maybe you can write three points to answer the question in detail with chains of analysis. But crucially, there'll be no extracts to help you. You'll need to apply with your own knowledge, with your own wider reading. The expectation of application is just as high as it is on the nine marker. So just because you don't have any extracts, it doesn't mean that, oh, your application can be less. No. The application is expected to be just as strong, but from your own mind this time. You've also got more time. You've got 20 minutes for that 15 marker. In paper three, you've got um, extract material now to help you as well. So you've got loads of detail, just like you do in the nine marker, to help you. But it's 15 marks, so it's going to be broad, just like the 15 marker in paper one and paper two. But now the only difference, you've got extract material. The time is the same as here. You've got 20 minutes to do this. So there's no difference really with the 15 marker at all in paper three compared to the 15 marker in papers one and two, except for the extract material to really help you with application. Otherwise, exactly the same technique, same time, 20 minutes each. So that covers these really important questions, guys. And let me tell you, you should be scoring full marks. This is very easy to do. If you know your economics well, you will score full marks. Just hit the technique, know the timing, and you'll be absolutely fine. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next video.